Hi, and welcome back to Studio Tamra, the Mystical Paintress. Today is January 18th. It is the full wolf moon. So I'm going to do a very quick little plein air painting of a full moon. Um, for those of you who are afraid of going out in the cold, there is an alternative. Um, get a high def TV in your studio or in your house. Find uh, an image that you would like to do a painting of, in this case, the full moon and set it up in front of your easel. And we're going to do a painting right here, right now on the full moon. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So this is gonna be a fairly quick painting. I believe the wolf moon sunset is tonight at 6.58. Um, I tinted the board here with blue, um, ultramarine blue. And then I just wiped it off just to give it a undercoat that's a little darker so that we can get that full moon. Tint your boards. Okay, hopefully your boards are tinted. Get out a big brush, dip it into your turp can. And what we are going to do is we are going to put in the darkest darks first. So what I need you to do is squint. Let's see, does this light help? Let me see. Does it help or make it worse? That might help a little. So we have the Ot light, which mimics outdoor light to give us lighting. The high def TV. We're going to do darkest dark first. So we are going to mix a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt umber and a little bit, uh oh, there it is, violet gray, just to get kind of a this dreamy dark look. So we're going to put our horizon low down here. This is excellent for beginners because you guys got to learn to just put some put some darks and lights and some strokes down. So, so this is just going to be dark areas here where the tree mass is. There's a little bit of stuff here like this. Uh, it's pretty monochromatic except for the, of course, uh, trees we've got some trees coming up except for the the pink in the sky which is interesting pretty so we're just not doing detail right now we're just squinting and putting in this i don't even want to get too detailed with the trees right now because i haven't done um I haven't done the sky, so I should probably get that sky in there before we do that. So these trees here, I'm going to add a little white to my mix, just a little, because they're a little further away. They're going to have softer edges. They're going to be lighter. Oof, got some red on this rag here. So I'm just kind of blocking in. If you squint real hard, you'll kind of get the idea of what I'm doing. But you gotta squint. Okay. So there's that. And I'm gonna keep this simple, abstract, so that all you beginners out there um, can keep along. Okay. Isn't this fun? So the first thing that I got to do with this sky is I got to add a little pink. You can buy pre-made pink. You can mix white with uh, any kind of red. I have cad red light here. Um, but basically, you're just going to put that little bit of pink right in there real lightly real lightly because we're going to be going over it with tree branches and if you do it too thick it's going to be a big problem so really lightly just kind of barely let the brush touch like this 
going to put a little bit in here too because behind these trees the sky's got to be the same color at least close <laughs> we hope now this is a time of year a lot of people are doing shadow work and this particular moon has to do with a lot of shadow work and letting go of uh, you know things that we no longer need patterns and energies and I'm absolutely on that path as well, so it's not easy, not an easy path right now if you're on that one. Okay, so now uh, we're going to add a tiny bit of cad red light to your pink, just a very tiny bit. Make it just a little darker. I'm doing very little bits here. This is a great alternative to painting outside just because huh, it's cold and if you don't have the gear, you don't have people that you know to go and paint with. Uh, okay, so do you see how we've got this gradation starting in the sky here? And then underneath it all, there's a tiny, ever so tiny bit of purple in here. So if you're going to add straight purple with white, mix it very lightly. Okay, hold on. Okay, back to work. So uh, where were we? Yes, so we're putting a little purple in here, just a very little bit. If you're mixing dioxide purple, use very little bit. So Anyway, I'm going to just kind of suggest a little bit in here. I don't want a lot of it. Just suggest some in there. Okay. There we go. That's nice. I'm just trying to mimic the colors that nature has here in this picture. And that's it. So. Mixing my pinks again, put a little bit more in here just as a, a light blend. Put a few sky holes in. Sky holes are the negative painting um, that you do between tree branches and in the winter, obviously there's more of them because in the winter you could see a lot more. <laughs> no leaves, right? Uh, at least if you're in Michigan, which is where we're at here. Okay, so I'm okay with that sky. That's okay. I mean, it's not great, but it's okay. So I'm going to wipe my brush off and just kind of lightly feather all of this together very lightly. Very lightly. I see. Whoops. Uh-oh. If you do that, a lot of people do. You just take your brush very lightly. Feather it out, just very lightly, just like that, okay. The interesting thing with this particular photo, <laughs> this pretty colorful sky, more than you would think. So we are gonna kind of try to blend it just like this. And we're doing a quick painting too, so, okay, there. Now, your next color, it looks like in here, would be just white. And if you want to add a little pink to your white, that would be okay too. But that's kind of what I see in the sky anyway, it's just, it gets lighter. Like this. And this is probably from the illumination of the moon, which interestingly, the moon illuminate, illu illuminates, illuminates your, your shadow stuff going on and helps bring light to whatever garbage you got hidden in there. And oh, we all have garbage, so it's tough, it's tough work. I commend you if you're doing it. Soulmate is connected. I wonder what soulmate's going to play. This might be scary. 
Okay, then up above, I am going to add a little cobalt and white just because I do want a little, a little bluer up on top, just a little. Remember, a little means a little. And I got to kind of blend it in with my full moon here. A little will go a long way in painting. So if you put too much on, you're going to know you put too much on right away because it's going to almost look like a cartoon. <laughs> so we don't want that. All right. So uh, our next thing here is we need to make our, our moon in the middle. And a great way to do this would be take an old... Um, uh, rag of any sort really I, I like to use towels and then just where you want your moon wipe all the paint off like this we do this because the moon is going to be the focal point and it can't be contaminated with other colors so there, so now you have a moon. How you doing? Are you having fun? All right, good. Take a break. I decided to turn off my, uh, my art light because I wanted to make sure that you could see this very well. Okay, so um, our next, uh, item to do on the agenda here would be bring in a little more of this land. Notice how we've got this, this kind of path, but it's very flat, right? So you want to keep it very flat like this. And then here, it kind of comes from nowhere, doesn't it? Like that. And then there's just stuff. So I'm just using that same gray color. You can add a little white if you want. And just kind of bringing this down like this. So here's our ground. See how I did that? Isn't this fun? This is fun. Um, and then we've got a little ground over here too. So we got to put that in. A little snowy ground. Um, you're not going to have a lot of details, and the reason we're not going to have a lot of details is because this is a full moon, and if you've ever been outside in a full moon, you can't see a lot of things, so there's not going to be a lot of detail here with this. Okay, um, so we got that. Our next thing we want to do is we're going to put our moon in. I'm using a filbert. I like bristle brushes. This is a size 4. And you're gonna just take a little bit of cad yellow light, which is also sometimes called lemon yellow and white. And you're gonna mix this beautiful, super bright white yellow kind of color. Just gonna really complement well with that purple you put in the bottom. And we're going to Just kind of in a very, there, in a very quick manner, just suggest kind of a moon. And then the next thing that we need is just pure white. And we're going to put pure white. This is hard to do because I'm trying to reach up. I'm at a weird angle so that I don't get in the way of the camera. But um, basically just, you know, making our moon here and now we're done with that so we're going to go back to the uh the uh vegetation here that was just like monochromatic darks this is just a very quick little how-to video for you at home um, anybody can do this anybody can paint all you need to do is believe in yourself and practice. Practice, practice. Just like learning to play piano, just like learning uh, martial arts, any skill, just need practice. People, 
people aren't just born better than than others. I mean, that's that's a, that's not accurate. Okay, so we've got this big guy in the middle. Go all the way off your painting. A lot of people, number one, don't use enough paint. I'm mixing, by the way, um, French Ultramarine Blue with Burnt Umber again. Same thing I did earlier. Kind of get this dark. Um, and interestingly, while we're painting this, the moon actually may be coming up right there in the skylight, which is pretty cool. Okay. So you just want to lift it right up off of the... Right up off of the painting. Just like that. And then... The way that you do branches, you just take your same mix, you hold the tip of a brush, and you seriously just, you know, you may want a smaller brush actually, especially if this is like something new to you. So let's do that. Let's get a smaller brush. Um, actually, a pointed brush is excellent. So let's see here. We've got some right here. So these are really good. Uh, I have a two and I have a six. Little pointy rounds. Dip them in your solvent, whatever that is, right? And then go into your blue and brown mix. And then you're gonna just hold from the bottom like this. And you're gonna just go up like that. If there's too much solvent, it will run. So I had a little too much, but that's okay, because the beautiful thing about oil is you can always wipe it off. And if, and if something feels a little too dark or you don't like it, you can just wipe it off. So, so have fun with these branches. Make some happy little full moon branches. 13 full moons every year. And so 13 was considered a lucky number by the Italians, the Strega. I know this because those are my people. And those are my ways that I follow. There you go. Look at how nice this is starting to come together. It's starting to almost look like we want. Fun thing about doing these is that you just learn things that you can apply when you do decide to go out in the field. And I did consider going out and, and doing this live, but it is about eh, 10 degrees maybe. And I'm just getting over getting sick. That's why I haven't had videos lately. So, okay, another thing you might want to do is just take a little extra of the blue or the brown and make a couple of the trees a little darker. That just tends to make it look a little more 3D. Kind of like this. Go all the way up off. There we go. Yeah, just like that. So, so this is really interesting that, that we have all this going on. I'm not real excited about this guy here. I'm just going to dab it. I don't know that I'm real excited about this guy here. And branches um, are not wormy. A lot of a lot of people that start painting tend to make them real wormy. Um, they're like a line, then a line, then a line, then a line, a line, a line, a line, a line. Obviously, if trees are further back, they're going to be a lot lighter. Um, and there are going to be some light, lighter things going on in the background here. Like this. You know, I know in this one that there's all these branches coming in from both sides, but I almost kind of like... That this doesn't have that. 
Uh, I guess I could put it up here. Yeah, see, I'm not real crazy about that. So if you don't like that, you don't have to have it. You don't have to copy a scene exactly. It's just something you don't have to do. So if you're not a big fan of it, you don't have to even have it in there at all. You can just wipe it off. Again, the beautiful thing about oil painting, and you can use your fingers. You can just wipe things out. It's freaking awesome. I love it. It's like my favorite oil painting. Um, so hopefully you are having a great time right about now with this and putting in a couple of these little dark negative areas in the back here that I see. Just a couple, a couple little things here. It's starting to look similar, not exact, but similar, which I'm okay with. Um, I'm going to add, just for fun, a little bit of light blue to that mix, that, that icky, icky, dark, dreary mix. I'm just going to add a little bit of light blue and kind of come in here because the moon is going to cast different... See that? See how it puts different reflections on things? And a tree isn't going to be all the way up the same on both sides. So wherever your light source is, that side's going to be a little bit lighter. So I just wanted to put that in there too. Okay, so there is our very cool looking full moon uh, skeleton. Now what we need to do is... We need to put a little bit of light here on this path. So the way I'm going to do this is first, I need a big brush. Get out a big brush. Add a little bit of blue up to that mix that you had going. The alizarin and, I'm sorry, <laughs> the ultramarine and burnt umber. Add a little bit of blue to that. And we're going to just try and put in some of these little, like, I don't know what it is. T tire tracks, maybe? I'm not sure. But it's something. I know that. And then we got a little something here, too. So I'm going to suggest them in there real fast like that. And then, oh, yeah, they're definitely too dark. But... Again, beauty of oil paint. I'm just going to wipe them out a little bit like this. Now that does kind of suggest a road. To me, anyway. This should probably be a little browner. You know, things closer to you, too, are going to be bigger and usually darker. Just so you know. It's just kind of how it goes. So, there's that. Make sure that I don't contaminate this painting to death with my dirty fingers. See, I already messed this up. But look how easy that was to fix. So just going to wipe these off a little. See how I did that? Now, it's my version of this moon. I think it's pretty cool, actually. I'm kind of liking it. Now i got to add a little bit of white. So I'm going to show you guys something really cool here. This is called a palette knife. And we're gonna take the palette knife and we're gonna take a little bit of that blue and white, because we don't want a, I don't know where to do this. We don't want this all white because we don't want to compete with the moon for our focal point. Focal point's where your eye goes first. 
Just gonna take a little bit of this blue and white on here and see how the, the sun or the moon, the sun, puts that little bit of light here. It's just a little more here than anywhere else. So. that and we have do have a little bit of snow in the woods here too but actually I don't want to do that because it'll compete with it so we're gonna just not do that but okay so the point of doing this is the reflection and this is like above my line of vision it's even hard for me to see what I'm doing but it's like the reflection from the moon on the snow and then we're gonna take a little bit of that cad yellow light of white and just put a little highlight there like that see that isn't that fun and hopefully at home you're following along and going, oh my God, this is so cool. The painting's awesome. So there it is. Isn't that fun? There's our little full moon painting, palette knife. I'll show you something else with a palette knife. I'm gonna grab a little one. I have a little one here. Oh, I do. I have lots of them. So this is smaller, right? And I'm going to take this palette knife, and I need some pure white for this. So I use Graham oil paint because they are walnut-based, which means they're probably very safe comparatively to other brands. And I'm going to take some pure white on here, this palette knife. See how I did this? And I am going to come into the moon right here. There. Can you see what I did? So now we have this little illuminated painting with the moon. And I actually want to wipe some of this off. I feel like it's almost too bright. There. So there it is. Yay, that was so much fun. So there's the outdoor photo. And here's a nice, simple little plein air painting that you can do on the full moon. Ooh, I'm hopeful that your little full moon painting turned out good. Here's how mine looks. And hope, happy January 17th, full moon, full wolf moon to you. Put this in a happy little frame and you can put it up somewhere. So thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I'm trying to find, oh, hold on. Here it is, my book. So if you don't have my book yet and you're interested in learning some things hands-on and you want to actually have something you can hold in your hands, um, I made this as user-friendly as I thought it could be. Um, I really went off things that I thought would have helped me learning plein air painting because a lot of the books are very much like a college textbook kind of. This is just a lot of fun. 400 pictures and uh, anyway if you're interested plain air tips and tales it is on amazon and good luck with your full moon painting and any other painting that you do and uh thank you to all my subscribers and patreon followers thank you so much and have a great night bye